I'm Kim. And we're glad you're joining us today to talk about our stitching and other stuff. Today's December 12th. So we're halfway to Christmas through the month of December, basically. Yay! I don't know I have how. a lot of wrapping to do. 13 more days I'm being informed by the specialist on the countdown. Oh, some little elves were wrapping today in here. Oh. Well, a, a little, a big elf. <laughs> Your dad. One. Started at six thirty this morning and started wrapping. I started wrapping my gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? I came stumbling in to go to the bathroom, and he's got the door locked, and I'm like, dude, I'm going back to bed. So just. <laughs> oh man, uh, we haven't wrapped a single thing, but it's time to start. I think I might start tonight. I wrapped a few yesterday before the month. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> my cough is way better, but. <laughs> still no the thing about wrapping is it takes up my knitting and stitching time mm -hmm. so you don't have as much knitting and stitching because you were wrapping well i wrapped yesterday morning so oh. i didn't do much yesterday well so i told sarah earlier i got up and i had a headache starting but i thought hey it'll go away hey, it'll go away and by the time i got done wrapping the few that i was gonna wrap and then i was supposed to go to get my covid booster so I got, I was in my jammies. And so I got up, take my shower and oh, that headache just was not going away. And I just thought, oh, do I really want to deal with this and try to drive in the rain to a place? I'm not even sure where I'm going with this headache. And then everybody I know has had a, a little bit of a reaction to the booster. So I do really do want to have a booster reaction with a migraine. Plus we're supposed to go to a friend's house for dinner last night to say goodbye to another set of friends or movie. So my husband said, just reschedule your booster and go to bed. So I spent the afternoon in bed and then got it down to a dull roar. But I, I would have come home from the booster and probably stitched some, but I just was in bed. Well, I knit this morning a little bit. I have a decent amount, but I didn't get much else done this week besides cross-stitching. <laughs> uh, can you actually pull the chair? Oh, and I was going to make cookies and I decided that I'm going to look up a recipe for a copycat recipe for um, uh, Starbucks cranberry bliss bars. Oh, yeah. Because anytime you go here to get one, they're sold out. So weird. And they're so yummy. So I made them one time a long time ago, but I think I overcooked my crust. So. I have never made them. I should look into it. It's not even something I go by. I don't really go to Starbucks that much. We have some other options that I'd like. Yeah. Are a little bit more yeah we have options they're called bikini baristas they're really exciting yeah we don't we have some of those too but those are not the options i go to yeah no we have honey feathers, which i think might be kind of regional i don't know if that's we have it over here they're just not anything in kent <gasps> but i don't know if they're like around the country i don't yeah. know if it's the northwest or but i like you know what i found out you know what i found out yesterday hobby lobby is opening up a new store in tuckwilla Oh, that's not where I thought they would go. But yeah, that makes sense too. I don't care. Coming. Yeah, coming is kind of running out of space for big. Yeah. Um, it's, that's it's a suburb of my little town. But uh, right now, I have to, I travel about twenty five minutes back roads to another little town to go to Hobby Lobby and my cross stitch store. So, and then there's another Hobby Lobby about a half hour south of me, which is a nightmare to get to. And it's a really, really busy area, Federal Way. And traffic is terrible. It's just one big strip mall after another. But the one in Issaquah that I go to is it's easy to get to. But now it'll just be down the hill from me. Yeah, it'll still probably take down by. To get well, there. it could. Well, maybe not during when I go in the morning, but it's down by um, <laughs> kind of down by the Joann's, like south of the Joann's. Oh, there nice. used to be, um, there used to be, I don't know, a Toys R, there was a big store there that went out of business and Toys R Us tried to make a comeback in there with a Babies R Us. And then they closed, <laughs> why Opal? <laughs> She's like behind the outside couch. What are you doing? She's looking at me in. Uh, anyway, so it's gonna become a Hobby Lobby. I'm very excited. Because what's down there is a Joann's, which is okay. That's a pretty good Joann's and a Michael's. And we were talking last night at my friend's house for dinner. Michael's in my area, they are. Miss here too. Huh? It's hit or miss here too. Yes. And they're expensive and they're dirt. The one that I go to, it's just dirty. It just looks, I think the lighting isn't very good in it. So it always feels like 
I don't know. I, I don't go in there very often. Oh, okay. Lydia's helping her get up on the stand. Oh, hi, Opal. Hi. This Did is you want to be on floss, floss tube today, baby? Hi, Opal girl. Like, no, I don't like and this. Gideon. And now Gideon needs to come in. He's our giant dog. No, I can't pay attention to you right now. Oh, yeah, there goes the sunlight. I may have to pause and move if this doesn't end up okay. working very well, likewise. Cheers. Uh, I'm, I'm drinking under the mistletoe today. Um, anyway, so I'm really excited about that because okay. I find better trims and stuff at Hobby Lobby than I do at my Joann's. So, yeah, anyway, Hobby Lobby. which is part of my haul today. Fun. Okay, well, let's do the girls. Yeah. And then we don't okay. have a feature. So I'm going to go start this. Better. Yay. It's a Christmas celebration set. I love that pattern. That's and from um, Julie sent Julie sent them to us. I dyed my yeah, the only thing holding us up was getting the fabric dyes. So you got your fabric dyed. I think Ooh, that's really cool. I that's think the pretty. will show up and the white. And we've got a little yeah. modeling. She didn't really want modeling, but I don't really know how to do it without. Kind of happens. I don't. I don't think you can really. I mean, I guess if you laid it flat on a. Yeah, pan. we. Just, I told her, I, but she. Yeah. You didn't mind it, did you? She kind of liked it. Ended up being a new start. So a little kit that I found. That I'm doing. Where did that little kit come from? Somebody give it to us. To us a long time ago when we first started Floss. I don't remember ever seeing that. I noted at the time who that was from. And it came with the little frame and everything. So, but I don't know. Uh, are you doing it like that? I don't, I don't know. know yet. Okay. So I did this today and yesterday. This is all today. Oh, wow. That's been a fast one for you. Yeah. It's there was a lot of time in the car yesterday for her to stitch. Well, yeah, actually, I only did the Where's little the bit, this oh, stripe yeah. of yellow and this stripe of yellow and the words. You did most today? of it today. Here. And yeah, the rest of it's today. There we go. There we go. So the You're going to have that done in no time, girl. Good yeah. time. Sorry. You better mute Cute. Me. And it comes with that little stand and everything, huh? Yeah. The stand is not green. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not a green. Anyway, so good job. I've got Liddy next. Liddy, Liddy here on to the show. Yay. What do you got going? What happens when mommy is signed? But then you kind of get going on it. And it's hard to stop. Huh? Um, so I'm I'm doing bees and honey by Tiny Modernist, and I'm doing this little one here. It's all the honeycomb. Yeah, that's so cute. Yeah, it is. Wow, look at you go. Yes. Is that green fabric? Hang on. Uh huh. It's like that's going to be cute on the green fabric. Okay. Welcome back. Technical difficulties hopefully resolved. Audio repaired. <laughs> now we have Rosie to show still. Maybe we'll actually get to some stitching today. Show us what you've been working on. Um, so it's the frosted pumpkin stitchery pen pals. Yes, your little pink girl. Girl, she's so cute. And then I worked on this green down here and this stem. Good job. You're getting there. You're getting there. My feet. And then you'll be on the border probably pretty soon. Yeah. I'm gonna change it to purple. That'll be cute. Yeah. Purple. Yeah, you're almost done with that, really. It's not that big of a border to do. Oh, I think it'll go pretty fast. Once mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Love you. Well, we do not have a featured friend this week, but if you're new, what we love to do is feature someone's else's, someone else's work. Mm -hmm. Gosh, my fridge. <laughs> Journey. <laughs> Welcome to real life, people. Um, so we just didn't have anybody send anything in this week that's finished. Also, I really love my thing that's been bumped probably when we were dusting, the crooked apple crate thing. <laughs> so if you have something that you've stitched and finished or is even in progress, whether you have a floss tube or not, we would love if you want to email us at the email address below and we'll show that. Yes. 
can enjoy and celebrate your work. Even if you have your own floss tube. Yes. Okay. What have you worked on this week? Show us. I, um, well, that's a good question. <laughs> well, well, I did, I think I talked about how I had to restart my Advent yarn cowl. Yes. So I'm getting, I have an Advent yarn calendar from Nitty McPurley on Instagram and I didn't, I messed up. You like accidentally uh, started the wrong box. You opened. Yeah. Color. And I, it doesn't probably really wouldn't have mattered. I, I wasn't sure what the next colors were. I kind of thought I knew, but it, it's fine. So this is how far I, I'm on. I started right up here. This little bit right here is day five. So I'm very, very behind, but this does move out of. Oops, see, I don't want to lose. I've got it bunched up here, but you can kind of get an idea. You. So, so and then your other one, because the colors are so different. Yeah, this color right here is kind of a weird rib pattern. You do like two rows of like knit two. I can't remember. Hmm. Knit two, purl two maybe, and then the, and then you knit a row, and then you've got two rows of like knit two or purl two, knit four. So it's kind of a, it gets it kind of a bumpy kind of a texture, which isn't really coming up. But anyway, I do know, because I've been opening them every day, that I do move into more greens. And there's actually kind of a brownish green that came, like a like a autumn -y colored skein, and then it went back to green. So I don't know what's coming down the pike, but it is definitely more jewelry toned than my other one, which is nice, because the other one I have is pastel. Yeah. So this is the Land of Sweets cow. It's, it's eight rows a day, but eight rows a day anymore now takes up because I've got passage time. <laughs> I know it's 250 stitches. So a row, if it's just a knit row, I can go pretty fast. But now I'm in a row, I'm in an eight row repeat where it's like, uh, like you knit one, yarn over, knit three, then you slip one, knit two together, slip that one over, yarn over, knit. So it's like a pattern every 10 stitches. So I'm counting every so many stitches to make sure I'm not dropping anything or forgetting to do a yarn over because then my counts are going to be all off so that took up some time but it was nice I worked on that this morning a little bit so that was relaxing um as far as stitching goes yeah I like that a little bit That's I, did, I did start my <laughs> oh my joyful world December which is the deer sure i'm crazy about that bird the dove do you like it yeah i don't know i don't know that i thought too hard about it mm. why do you not like it i don't know I, i'm not always a fan of her birds but she does i think they're kind and i love her i love joyful uh, snowflower diaries but i think they kind of i don't know actually I, maybe i don't mind it too much sometimes they look a little of that more of that sampler look that kind of ancient and I don't know if I'm always a fan of that but anyway to be decided later so I did all of this mm, yeah I did a little bit more there and I've started the deer oh nice open there we go so love it love it December is my jam um so the deer is going to be a, you know it's not huge but just more that's the most concentrated stitching that's going to be on here so I did the D that I started that and then if you remember from the past I started a stitch along it was that hard hard name to say crew go 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 is it end of go go yeah you know Rosetta go go Maybe. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> it's an advent cell. It's all these little adorable motifs that are actually quite complicated. There's a Norwegian knitter that's doing like one a day. I don't know how she's doing it, but anyway. So I started with, I think it's a pie, like a little Christmas pie up here. Uh huh. It's a lot of white. <laughs> and I showed my very, very beginning start because of course I'm late last week. And I had started it. Uh, I'm slipping around. I started it on this fabric. Yeah. And I'm I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's 
story of your life. I know, I'm so bad, you guys. This was a, and I like the fabric actually without that on it. It's a, it's just, oops, it's a huge piece. Of, I mean, it's a huge cross stitch piece. So it's a half a yard. And this was 32 count platen, plantain, platen, platinum, platinum Lugana. <laughs> Well, they split platinum up and then ums on the next line. I don't know why. That's so, weird. That's not platinum. I would think of platinum as like silver. I know. And I really do like Lugana. And this is a beautiful piece of fabric. And I will use it. It just, I don't know why. It just didn't, it wasn't really calling to me. So I, when I went and did errands the other day, I found a different piece of fabric, which is, I'm going to tell you what it is before I show it. It's just a 32 count star sapphire. I will just probably have enough room. Hmm. I And I had to decrease my border from three to two, but that's fine. So I restarted it yesterday. And this fabric is that stiff, stiff fabric, like it can stand up on its own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's really hard to get this hoop on. Good grief. So stiff. Yeah. So. I didn't get this right. I was working on this late last night. So here we go. Just kind of scrunch it up here. I restarted it. Oh, that looks good. And I just like that white on this color better yeah. than the red. I don't know. That's nice. Kind of crooked. I didn't fold yeah. it very well, but I actually have more done. Like I hadn't done this border last time and I'm pretty much to where I think I stopped on the, that's like the whipped cream or the frosting. Oh yeah, a cupcake or a pie, like a meringue or something, huh? Like meringue or something on top. Maybe yeah, it's got like a little. You can you can probably see it because my camera's not that great, but there's like little mo little star motif. Yeah, those are in gold. Yeah, that's the funny sucker up there, the little pinwheel sucker, which I named her. I know. <laughs> so anyway, I'll have more to show. I do like it, and I and I'm much more motivated to work on it now that I like this fabric better. I think I just wasn't, I don't know, do you ever, I mean, does anybody else ever have that problem? I know they do, but maybe not as often as I do. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I even really stop and reevaluate all that often. I'm just like, get my blinders on and I'm just gonna stitch it. Well, anyway, so that took up, these two things are pretty much what I've worked on, that in the knitting. And uh, one night I didn't, I didn't knit. I didn't do anything. I just sat there on the couch in a stupor. I told Sarah, I think I told Sarah, I told somebody. So you that sat there on the couch in a stupor? I did. In a stupor? Is that what you call <laughs> After work one night, I don't know. The work's, work is nuts again. Mm -hmm. They always wait until a holiday comes up and I'm off the week between Christmas and New Year. So it, I just, I'm like, are you kidding me, you guys? Are you kidding me that we are now trying to shut? What kills me is, you guys, is that they're scheduling all these kids to come in for appointments for therapy. They're all going like to on, on the 23rd and the 21st. And so I have to get everything ready, even though I know in my heart of hearts that 95% of these appointments that I'm getting ready are going to be no shows or cancellations. Yeah. Because it always sounds great when you get a call from a doctor's office. Hey, we can get you in on the 23rd and you've been waiting for a while. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. And then you know that if you cancel just one time, you can keep your appointment. Now, if you cancel, we have a percentage of, of um, appointments you have to keep or you get booted off a therapist schedule because we have a lot of right. families that just kind of flake out and come whenever they want. And that's not how you can do business anymore. So anyway, I just know I'm doing all this work and stressing about it. And these kids aren't even going to come until January, but whatever. At least, at least it'll be in place for January. I know. But also having people living in my house makes me more distracted and I just mm -hmm. am tired. I'm just more tired, I think. So anyway, things will get better. Things will get better in January. I'll be more focused. I won't have Christmas wrapping to deal with and shopping. December, I mean, I actually often get a lot done because I'm sometimes kind of avoiding all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but we're reaching the point of no avoidance, honey. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 12th. Don't I know it. All right. Well, I'll show what I worked on this week. Yeah. You yeah. probably have more than me. So I was really focused on this just kind of directing my stitching. I just kind of stuck to my plan here. So I'll just describe what I've done as I go. Edited plan. 
my edited plan. If you were watching last week, I slashed all my time by a third. Mm -hmm. So instead of three hours, it became one hour, which was probably really wise because then I was really motivated to actually do And it. this is from the magazine monthly challenge group, which we're both in, which I dropped out of this month because I knew I knew I wouldn't. But I think they just I think I just saw Carolyn post the bringo stuff, which was funny because this morning I was like, I bet the January stuff's going to come out soon. <laughs> and then I got on Facebook for a minute and there it was. So I've been working on this. My goal to finish this this month. Very close. Very close. You have a finish. I don't have a finish yet, but I am close. You will. I worked on this the other night. I'll probably always look at this and think of while you were sleeping because I watched while you were sleeping while I worked on this. Oh, you are really close. I'm close. So I have this postage stamp up here that has the number 25 in it. And then the word Mary down at the bottom. Whoa, the light behind is shining there. Oh gosh, yeah. So I should probably be able to finish this this week. The postage stamp is a good amount of stitching, but I'm like halfway done with it. So, yeah. although what I realized as I was looking at it, each of these little border, you know, the every other stitch down there are completely backstitched around to make it more like. What are? These, this stitch down here. Oh. And then as you go up, you do every other stitch as well. So it looks like, you know, how postage stamps have that little scalloped that edge. Mm -hmm. Because you, and I looked on Instagram to see if I was reading that right, because that's what I thought the directions were saying, but you can't really tell from the photo. And some people didn't do that. And some people did, because on the actual chart, it doesn't, it just shows a back stitch around, like around. Sure. Yeah. But when you look at the picture, you can see that each of those little scallops are red backstitched. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at it thinking, how did she get those to pop and realize those are all backstitched? And um, I looked at Instagram, like I was kind of searching a tag for this one. And some people did and some people didn't backstitch all the way around. Maybe just some people didn't really know that that's what it was supposed mm -hmm. to. And it makes a huge difference if you don't. So I'm yeah. I wasn't really considering not doing it. I had a right. few, but that that'll probably go faster than you think. Because okay. you'll be motivated to get it done. Stitches around each thing. And yeah. that's the thing is usually kind of a breeze. So mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one thing I worked on. My goal uh -huh. to finish that this month. And I'm pretty sure I'm well on my way to doing that. Oh shoot, my other project is not over here. One sec. Okay. And what we were just talking about in the magazine monthly challenge, they run a January challenge within that group called AB Singo. No, no, AB, AB, no. No, it's just Bringo in January. Bringo. AB yeah. Singo and it's, is in the fall. It's yeah, like, sorry. It's Bringo for Burr and, and Bringo. And it's more, a little more complicated than AB Singo because it's not just letters it's actual prompts. So you've got, they'll give you a list of prompts that you plug projects into. It may be like your oldest whip, something with a tree in it, something with a star in it. Usually it's not that, comp they're not that specific, but, and then you find pieces that you want and you plug them into the board randomly. And then they call the numbers throughout the month. And it was a lot of fun. And I had a lot of different projects on mine last year and it made January go really fast. You know, January, we all talk about how, uh, well, not everybody, but up here in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Hemisphere, winter can be um, very- long, Depressing, uh, long, dark and depressing. Yeah, I, I don't personally get depressed, but it is kind of a burrowing time. <laughs> I feel like I burrow and evenings, and it will be very quiet here because we won't have anybody living with us. So it'll be back to just my husband and I in the evenings. And so, I don't know, it just kind of made the month go fast. I was like, at the end of the month, I'm like, whoa, January's done. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, if you're interested in something like that, check out the magazine monthly, that's what it's called, right? Magazine monthly? Magazine monthly challenge, I think. And it's on yeah, Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. They just hit a thousand members. Oh, yeah. So they're doing that. And then there's other the rest of the group is is a monthly thing where you have a prompt for the month, which Sarah has, and then theme for the month, which is sparkle and shine, and then you pick a piece theoretically from a magazine, but yeah. follow the rules. Um, this was from a book, which I think is the same, but I, I, books count. Even, I might just abandon that whole thing and just pick a whip that I have going because I don't, it's not a big goal of mine to stitch from magazine. Yeah. 
But anyways, then you pick something that you think fits in here. So I picked my fall sample, which you'll see in uh -huh. a minute because it's kind of snowflakes and sparkle, you know, sparkle and shine. And then the word is sparkle, it's the acrostic and you just fill in. Oh, I'm here. Sorry. You just fill in your um, whips or whatever you want to fill in there for your mm -hmm. like a goal. So like- I Do not have to be magazines or books. For sparkle, for S, I picked my snapper land, which, did I bring that over? Yes, I did. And that was great because I haven't like worked on that for a long time. Yeah. I had that as a whip go goal and then I never really picked it up again. I was kind of burned out on it. Yeah. So every month it's different. It's different and so month. it's kind of fun. It's a fun little group. Everybody's really positive and stitchy minded. And I think, you know, everybody feels welcome, I think, there. So anyway, look for so it. For, so for it. L, so here's like how it ends up working if you if you don't already do this. For L for Sparkle, I picked Little House Needleworks for L mm -hmm. and worked on my bookshelf, which pattern came from my Aunt Nancy. So thanks, Aunt Nancy. And I worked. I put it on a Ooh. Oh, you used your rod for the, your yeah. scroll thing. And there we go. Yeah, Jesse, or I mean, Rosie gave this little, it's just a scroll rod from Hobby Lobby. And I didn't really have a great piece originally that I knew I wanted to put on it. So this actually works nicely. So I worked on all these books over here. Well, how does that, I don't even know how those work. Like, oh. how is that staying on there? Well, okay, let me see if I can do it without taking it apart. So you would oh. unscrew these. Oh, and you thread it through. And the rods come out, like you just pop up, you know, they just are mm -hmm. a rod. And they have a little, almost all the way through, but not all the way through crack cut into them. So you slide your piece, both on the top and the bottom, into that little crack. And oh. then put the rod into the frame and tighten the bolt so that it's tight. Mm -hmm. And you can just... Well, if it's hard to roll, you probably need to loosen your thing a little oh, bit. Okay, you can just it. tighten it by rolling it. Oh, okay. That's how it works. I might've just rolled it. I don't know, something happened to it. But that was nice because I've never really stitched that way before. Sorry, my lights behind are kind of weird here. But that's where I've come to. Wow, it's looking so pretty. I know, and I it's pretty. I have this just propped on my little end table in front of a basket of books. And all week I've been looking at it like, isn't that so pretty? I did all the red on this. So that made those little berries kind of flowers or whatever. They're supposed to be kind of pop out. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. And then I did those books up in the corner. My goal was one hour and I hit that goal. Uh-huh. Um, so then I worked on, let's see, did I work on this? I did. So for E for Twilight Angel, this was kind of reaching. There's an E in Angel. Well, anything, anything goes. Uh, it was really reaching, but I could not think of something else. Probably somebody else could have. Um, I worked on my dimensions. It's a little gold, gold collection, petite. And I have not worked on this for a long time. So I was really glad I put it on there because it is a really fun thing to work on. And I did oh, all wow. this white down here, pretty much. Pretty. I know she is really pretty. I don't know what it is I love stitching. I think I just like watching it kind of grow. Yeah, she is pretty. So I met my goal for that, which was an hour. Okay. And Good for you. I know. I really like, uh, I probably could have stretched a little bit to two hours, but one hour might have been too easy. Yeah. You know, you're successful now. And then I wanted to work an hour. This was for, um, da -da 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 -da. oh, Sparkle A because I think Alvaro might be tree because this is, it's not Christmas without a tree of Christmas. I think it's the oh. translation. <laughs> so I picked Alvaro for tree for, mm -hmm. I mean, for A. Okay. On my core, it had been a while since I pulled this out too, because I also, yeah. that's one of the other things like, I, because of Whipgo, I found that I was burning out on projects. What are you doing? You don't have to like hunch back it over here. <laughs> did you tell them to go outside until you were done? I thought so. But here yeah. they all are. I did a lot of white. Lots and lots of white. Well, that's the thing. You worked on that piece a lot in the summer during Whip Go. Because I think I had a Whip Go goal and a monthly goal or something. So I really yeah. pulled up on it. Yeah. So the house is basically done. I don't really, um, there might be one little backstitchy thing I need to do on this big Yay, one. Yay, that's an accomplishment. 
The porch is done. The little girl is done. So I'm moving over to work on the little boy with the Christmas tree. So that's, I'm probably about, I probably could figure out where I stitched to and then go up now. That's a big piece. I know. So he's probably right around here. So I can start stitching upwards and do little boy and be done with white. I gave that to Sarah for Christmas a few years ago. I thought it was a cute little project. <laughs> Three years later, I'm halfway through. <laughs> But I do like it. It's going to be so cute when it's done. It's so cute. And now you've got that companion piece from Stitch Fit. So that'll be really cute. Oh, that will be really cute. So like I said, for S, I was working on my snapper land. So these are patterns that you brought back to me from Stitchville, USA in Minnesota. So I've stitched all three of the first set. I'll just show really quick. I've stitched all of these. Uh -huh. And now I'm on to the last and final square, which I don't have the picture of. I think it's in my other basket. It fell out. I didn't put it back in. Oh, look at that, though. Ah, my brown came unraveled, and I didn't have it on the... <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Are you laughing at my threads? Did you ever figure out your border? Remember you were having just a fit about the border color? This one? Yeah. Uh, I just made it up. I think what I did was use um, walnut. What is oh, okay. That? Is it a, what is that? Dental arts. I think I might've used the walnut on the first one, but it never really looked quite right when I started it on the next ones. I just switched to a DMC that looks almost the same. Yeah, you I can't really tell from here. I don't think so. And I was very pleased this week, the border on this last one matched all the way around. Woo, okay. I did that this morning and I got the snowman done and the chimneys and the little smoke. Does the snowman have something in his face that's not done? Um, I had to go find the orange. I didn't have the orange pulled. So I'll do that. Yeah, there's going to be a little orange nose there and there. I never okay. had the orange pulled for that one for some reason either, but I had that's it a in a cute this little winter piece too. I know. So then I will go back and do the white border. I mean, the blue border, blue and white border all the way around it. I love that border too. I do too. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it, even though yeah. borders are such a pain, but I think it's so cute. That's different. Yeah. I think that'll just add a ton. Yeah. I'm almost done with the main stitching and then I'll go back to that border. Yeah. Almost there. Met my goal on that. My goal for my stocking was to get 35 trees this month and I'm at 17. No, 14. I'm at 14. So I'm almost halfway there. I've been working like this stretch here. Okay. So this week I think I did like seven. Let me show you, it's growing. It's growing. It's growing. Who oh, knew there could be so many different tree patterns? I know. I did all of these basically down right in the middle of the screen. Uh -huh. The two big ones, those two big ones right there, and then the ones around them. That piece makes me feel, I don't know what it is. Not, not bad, like nostalgic for something, but I can't tell you what it's nostalgic about. Huh. I just always feel, I don't know, something from my childhood that reminds me, but I can't even tell you what it is. Interesting. I know. Because I wouldn't say it's a particularly like vintage E. It's a little samplery. Yeah. I don't know, just something from when I was a little girl that reminds me of it, and I don't even know what it is. No, it's maybe a illustrations in a book or something. You know? Maybe, oh. yeah, maybe. Funny. It's really pretty. No, I really do like this one. It's for Daddy. Yeah, I'm making this for Jesse, and then I have the companion piece, cranberry and rose, or something, or I don't remember the other name. What does it say? Uh, cranberry row is the companion piece and it's basically the same kind of trees and they're all done in rows and I already have it and the fabric so when I finish his I'll do the beading I think I don't know I might wait and do all the beading on the boat or something at the very end I don't know. I haven't decided yet no that's a bad idea probably, <laughs> you probably don't know that. that's a really bad idea I think. okay and the um oh, I did a little knitting but the last thing I stitched on was my goal is to finish this one this month, and I think I'm pretty much on track to do this. This is the 12 sampler 
for those of you who are going to ask. It's a cross stitch Christmas and it's from 2003 from Better Homes and Gardens. Let me double check on the date. Yeah, 2003. And you can still find this book on places, eBay or whatever. Um, I think I'm going to finish it. I'm yeah. Gonna... Oh, I think you are too. Wow. Yeah, I'm really close. So this week I did um, this plant here, the snow, uh -huh. and I think these flowers and this whole tree. I was going to say, that whole tree wasn't there before. I think I just had the ground done yeah. last week there. Um, so. Wow. Okay. You are very close. I have another tree. Let me see. I can't remember now. I have another tree and another little squirrel and a little snowflake. I think I did it. Sure. I'm buy it. Sure. So it'll be all ready. You can fin fully finish it and have it up for winter. I think so. Oh, and I have the letters, but that'll go pretty fast. Yeah. So I have one more floral motif here. Uh huh. This tree. There's another squirrel kind of hiding behind this branch. Uh -huh. and this snowflake. Then half the alphabet, and then it's done. So I think close. So close. So close. I think I will finish that by the end of this month. And then I will be able to, I'm gonna make it into a pillow with a little, probably some kind of blue calico back. Uh-huh. I'd love to do like a blue pom-pom or maybe a sparkly white pom-pom trim around it. That'd be cute. I've never really done a pillow with a pom-pom trim. Oh, I bet you could find some kind of sparkly something on um, Etsy. Lady yeah. Dot Creates probably has something. She does. Special. I, they do, she does, it does. Yeah, she does. Lady the Dot. last thing I have is my knitting. So last week I was sharing about my debacle, about what I was gonna do for the pockets and I got them started and I think it'll work just fine. It's kind of a hassle to manage a number of balls of yarn, but I did end up starting the pockets with um, their own individual balls of yarn. And then the little strip in the front of, here, let me see how I can lay this out. So this is gonna be the pocket lining and I'll stitch, I'll knit that later and it will go underneath and then join up at the bottom down here. So to make a pocket. Mm -hmm. For now it's just open on a, on a waist. Yeah. So I have a ball of yarn in gold, a little, a little ball attached to this string. And I have a little ball, let me get this. Oh. Right, a little ball of red attached to this end of the pocket and a large ball of gold for the back and a small ball of red for the pocket and a small ball of gold for the... It's too bad you couldn't just do the pocket on one side and then start moving across, you know what I mean? But I know there's not a way. I probably could have messed around more with the pattern, but I just thought I'll just do what it takes and then I won't mess anything up. <laughs> so the ball the yarn. I know it is. So then I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to get my bigger project bag out and probably put them in. I think I'd stab my eyes out because <laughs> they'd be hard to do all the time. But here's the cute edging for the pocket. So, so that cute. this is the top of the pocket. And now it's just stockinette stitch. Just the rest of the pocket will just look like that. But this sweater is cute. This yarn is nice to work with, thankfully. So even though it's a little tangly and fiddly to have all those balls of yarn. Yeah. I think it's pretty much optimal. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can kind of show what it will do. Let me get the lining tucked down, maybe. Waste yarn tucked down. It's a really creative pattern. I should probably quit trying, but that's what it's basically gonna kind of look like. Yeah. Never mind. Cool, we'll keep trim. By next week, hopefully I'll have more. The other challenge is that each row takes a really long time right now because it's all the way around. And so it might be a while that I have all those balls of yarn. So hopefully I don't lose steam. But that's everything I did this week. I love well, very productive versus my zombie week. Yeah, I don't know how I got so much done. I think it helped to just think, oh, I've got an hour on each of those things. I can yeah. I can pop out one hour. Right. Um and I think it's motivating to be so close to the end of those other two, the Mary one and the. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, once you can start getting close to them, it's easy to be motivated to work. And I keep them. thinking about all the projects I'll get to start. I like haven't really let myself start much because I had enough that I was feeling kind of scattered and I wanted to finish up a few things before I started eating. 
but I have several patterns kind of lined up that I want to do next. So hmm. I feel a little scattered too, but I seem to still start new things. I know. I just don't like, I, I, I need to stop it. <laughs> yeah, just stop it. I say every week and then I've got haul. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else. Um, do you have haul this week? I do have haul this week. So last week I shared how, oh, actually, hold on a second. I want to tape this um, sticker to this fabric that I'm not using anymore because I went, I don't, I want to remember what it is. Okay. And the little sticky sticker isn't sticking. Yeah. So that way I don't forget what this fabric is. Okay, so last week I showed my finish of Dreaming Girl. Okay, which if you're new, is this Barbara Anna piece that I finished that I heavily modified. And I was gonna think about getting a frame and I found a frame, and I don't know if I want a frame. So I'm actually gonna make it into a pillow. You are? I am. And so I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday or Friday and I got just a gray fabric to back it with. Thank you. And, I, and then I bought, this cool trim. Hmm. So I bought it in gold. Oh, cute. You see it? Kind of. Is it wide or no? Oh, I see. It's kind of a rope. Let me see if I can. See, it's kind of a rope. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I bought it in the gold and I bought it in a blue. It's color blue. Oh, that's pretty too. Kind of a gray blue. So I don't know which one I'm gonna use. And so I, I bought those two, I bought the gray fabric. And then, you know, when you do a pillow, you got an opening at the back. I bought a, these, cause I'm gonna put a button on the back. And I bought these pretty hmm. sparkly. You. Kind of, they've got the blue, they focused earlier when I tried this. There we go. On Great. the back. Oh, that'll be pretty. Yeah, but this will probably not happen till after I get my sewing room back when Junie's family leaves for the tundra. Yeah. Um, so, it, but I've got them all ready to go. And so that was part of my haul. Yeah. And then when I was wandering around Hobby Lobby, I'm just so impressed with the different kinds of fabrics they're getting in. And I was telling Sarah, I found this, it's an artiste and it's a 32 count Murano. It probably is not going to show up. You can kind of see it's got pink little polka dots. Cute. So I bought a thing of that. They also are repackaging uh, their artiste. Even we, this is the 28 count blue. Mm -hmm. I love this. I've stitched a couple things on this 28 count blue. And then I bought, uh, so Lindy Stitches designer is doing a stitch along for January, February, March, April, I think four months. And it's, it's a Lindy pattern. That's all I can say. It's very quirky, but sweet. And she could not use the words, what a wonderful world because of copyright. So she's titled it, what a marvelous world. But she said, nothing could, nothing will stop you from typing, from typing, from stitching wonderful. But she uses a seraphim, a sea spray seraphim. And I was able to snag a piece of it. Oh. And so it's this beautiful, and yeah, not going to show up. There we go, maybe. Kind of a green. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. So I didn't download the pattern. Well, she hasn't. She hasn't released the first pattern. First clue drops on January first. So I did that. I also joined her bird, her bird crush club. So she's doing a bird a month, mm -hmm. which you can drop out of. So if I don't end up because there's people that are waiting to get into it so if i if i drop i know they'll be she's got a wait list so i think that that and the other thing i bought was so a while ago i had shown with an old whip of mine that i really wanted to get done this christmas and i had everything it's a pre pattern from lavender and lace from goodness knows when Mm -hmm. 2000 and it is an angel mm -hmm. 
and I have uh, just some beading to do. And uh, I couldn't remember when I was at the store. I think I needed gold. I I needed I, my my gold beads were too big, so I did buy some petite gold. Hmm. And then I thought if I wanted to, I bought. I didn't know if I needed any more of the glass, pearly glass, but I bought some more petite of the clear, very Sorry. kind of opal, yeah, kind of off white. And there's not that many to do. I mean, she's really, really close. Mm -hmm. And she is very pretty. That's really pretty. I'm not focusing, but anyway, so I, and I got some beading needles because I really do. I had this as one of my goals for this month, but I haven't been able to. Oh, you know what? I think I needed a petite. What do I need? I've got petite in here. Hmm. I'll have to look at the directions again. Anyway, she was a goal for December of this year. She needs to get done. I probably started this in 2000. So, um, you know, what? That's 23 years? 21? 21 years? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I got. And then I was thinking about so that, and then I got us a giveaway for today. So, you um, we talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Did you get haul? Probably not. Cause you've been busy. Um, doing other stuff this week. It's for Millie. Huh? A couple just DMCs for Millie. Uh, no, but I did get in the mail. So if you remember, if you've watched before, I was participating in an art exchange. Oh challenge. yeah. Did you get so yours? I did. So I sent off mine. I created a embroidered tree and I haven't heard back yet from the gal who has that. It's such a crazy time of year. Yeah. And I got a package yesterday or the day before with mine in it from somebody. Her name is Anna and she's a potter and they're gorgeous so we were kind of collaborating and I don't know what I'm going to do because these are so pretty I really don't want to detract from them but she also had tucked in some washi tape that says oh. bless your home and a cd a Christmas music cd so if you're if you didn't so what this challenge kind of was was you created part of a piece and sent it for them to then add whatever their specialty is to it yeah so Sarah did a uh -huh. embroidery piece and send it to a person that does like bead work and wire work and stuff so she could do her own thing and then she gets to keep it and Sarah gets to keep what she just got yes and I the gal who made these asked if I would be willing to make duplicates and then she sent some money along so that I can send back so she can have a matching piece so well. you have to do something now to them <laughs> well I have to anyways she said in her thing she was so sweet she was like I don't mind whatever you want to do. You can paint these because this is not glazed. The inside is glazed. Gorgeous. Oh, green. Yeah. Little vases. Yeah, vases. She's like, but if you want to smash them and use them, the pieces to make a mosaic. I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, I cannot imagine smashing these. So she made two very basically identical pieces. Uh -huh. Left the holes in the top because we were discussing possibly like me stitching a small piece and like, you know, attaching it here through the holes. And that's probably the best thing I could come up with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful vase. Beautiful. And um, I've been thinking about what to do because these make me think of that Japanese art and I'm forgetting the name now, but you know, when they take a cracked piece of pottery or a teacup, maybe you haven't heard of this. I wish I remembered off the top of my head what it's called. But they repair things so that the cracks still show so you can sort of see the scarring of past damage but then it's mm. still i've heard of it i couldn't tell you what it is though i can't remember what it's called but yeah. so because of all the like crackle and cracks um this is and it is really a rough it's unfinished but i can't remember how she fired it so that it has this beautiful beautiful color inside they're kind of like a brownish green inside um what did you say Millie sometimes yeah sometimes they'll use like a gold filament to fill or you know like to fill in where the cracks are yeah. highlight the cracks 
So I was thinking about looking more into some Japanese embroidery techniques because there is a whole movement of Japanese specific oh, yes. embroidery related to sort of some of the spiritual practices traditional in Japan. And so I've been thinking about doing some reading and research and I want to use sort of a nature theme of mm -hmm. some kind, but I want, I was thinking about trying to incorporate techniques just as a fun thing and, yeah. and maybe trying to use some gold threads like mm -hmm. kind of, kind of oh, that would be pretty yeah and um, meaningful yeah and I think gold in particular would look really pretty with the brown yeah -ish. And so I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do I just got them a couple days ago and I, I but I do think I'll probably end up doing just a strip just uh -huh. real small yeah attached by threads through here somehow yeah the other, the other thing I thought I could consider doing would be knitting something very delicate, like a lace work and sort of attaching or threading it through. So that's another thing I'm toying around with. Like well, There's a lot of Japanese knitting techniques out there too that are very different from, I think, American knitting. Yeah, so I might look at- Not American, but English. Silk, or like a, um, not silk, but like a very, like a lace weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I need to do a little thinking. I probably won't. Okay, so Shibui. So there's a store in Oregon okay. that carries Shibui, and they have very fine, almost, I don't want to say metal, but it's very filamenty mm -hmm. that people have knit with. Mm -hmm. um it's not cheap but you wouldn't need much I need um, the tiniest amount really probably for you know something. so i don't know how much a skein is but it's very um yarn harlot mm -hmm. was doing a garment out of it a while, way long time ago i don't know if she ever finished it it would be too much for me to do a garment out of it but it, it you should look to see oh, i'm yeah. just trying to figure out what that yarn story is but they always carry um shibui stuff and shibui is very very beautiful and I'll have to look into that because that might be where it's I not it. fuzzy. It's not a fuzzy kind of yarn. It's not a fuzzy yeah, fiber. Yeah. Like a metallic. Yeah. Almost like a metallic. Um, anyway, you might, that might be something too. I, I totally forgot about that stuff until just because now. I think that might be such a pretty contrast to sort of the rough to have a very delicate mm -hmm. thing around the top. So I'm still yeah. waiting. I'll think I gotta keep thinking about it, but that's good. I'll have to look into that. But you don't have any big deadline for this now. This is well, I mean, I think people were kind of supposed to have this done kind of in the middle of November, but tons of people are like way behind and it's not oh, a big life. Any time we do, yeah. At any yeah. time. So hopefully, yeah. you know, I will want it to get it done, but yeah. But this took her a long time because the weather conditions and things at the place where she lives, which I'm spacing where she's from, were like so humid and moist, or maybe they had too much rain that firing it needed to wait a little bit oh. extra or something. Yeah. Anyway, beautiful. So I'll, um, I need to look her up. I should look her up and maybe next time I'll put, I'll share more about her because I think she's at like an actual studio. She sent oh, wow. at their pottery studio. Beautiful. Very special. Yeah. Yes, really special and gorgeous. So anyways, that's really the only haul. And it was so sweet that she tucked in a little cookie cutter. And I know. Yeah, a little extra. Really, really nice little letter. So that was really sweet. Anyway. Very fun. All that I know. Well. Plans this week. Plans this week are to keep work. I just feel like I'm just going to work on this advent. I, it's, I'm just kind of in a Christmassy mood because you yeah. know, I don't stitch Christmas. <laughs> I still haven't worked on my um, Mary and Bright, the Pineberry Lane, which I wanted to work on that a little bit. So I might try to pull that out. And I'm definitely working on my Joyful World. And again, mm -hmm. you know, there'll probably be some knitting because I'm trying to, I would love to have this cow done sooner than later. So I'm not just have another whip out there, mm -hmm. but I'm obviously behind like, I don't know, 10 days. Um, and then I still, I still need to just take a day to just go through what I had started planning for next year. It's all tucked in the closet because I didn't, I had to clean up and I just need to sit on the floor and just get it out again. And I just haven't had the mind space to do it. I don't think, but I do want to do that to kind of get an idea. And I was thinking, somebody told me, oh, you can't, you can't wait till the week after Christmas to do Bringo. That's too close. But I thought, you know what? The week after Christmas is exactly when I put my Bringo board together last year. The holidays were over. I was done. 
um, you guys had already gone home. It was just quiet and I, I could do it. Although Cassidy and Andrew might be here still, but that's okay. The holidays will be over and it won't have the pressure of the holidays. And it was actually very relaxing to just kind of sit and think about that kind of stuff. So the Bringo board, I'm not gonna, well, I can't really do much. I haven't released it yet, I don't think the prompts. But anyway, I, I do need to do that. But my birthday is on Saturday and I am gonna do a birthday start, which I've never done. Yeah. But Cassidy and Andrew gave me this Mirabilia kit last year for my birthday. And she is up. Oh, oh, I wonder if I can take her out. I can. Uh, so I first saw this pattern last year because Robin from Magazine Monthly Challenge, she's one of the hosts, had gifted her pattern to Carolyn Zook and she had shared it. And so I saw it and I realized it was a kit. Yes, so pretty. I don't know if I can get it to zoom in. Robin did not put the wings on hers. And I don't know if I will. I might though. I think she's cute with the wings. And I quickly put it on my Christmas list and I got it for Christmas last year. And it came with the whisper and everything. It was a kit. There's wow. not a, I don't know a lot of Mirabilia kits. Yeah, that's fine. But she's called the Christmas Elf Fairy. And I think, I think the kit's still available. I think I saw it. Maybe I went two, three stitch or it has been available unless they're out of it. But it comes with the fabric and everything. I don't know, it, it has beads. And I've been waiting all year. And so this is going to be my, I'm a December baby. And so I'm going to do a December Christmas elf fairy for my birthday. That's my big plan. <laughs> That's my big plan. Big plan. A new start. <laughs> that sounds good. Sounds like something to look forward to. It will be. It will be. Um, <laughs> but I was going to mention too, because I, I think there's somebody else or two doing this next year with me. I can't remember. <laughs> I have to go back and look at my DMs, but I did want to put a plug in because I am, you know, after I do this joyful world in December, I just have the border to do. So I'll plug along on the border, but I liked having a monthly piece. And so I searched and searched and searched and I found a few more that I bookmarked for future years. But I did come up with this. I found this one historical sampler company called, what's it called? The name is given on the front of it. Our year. And so it's just a square for each month, and they're very cute. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody else wants to stitch it along, it's all DMC. I've got it all kitted up and ready to go in my bag by Quilting with Nico. Christina. I think of her as Christina. You think of her as quilting with Nico because you've done more ordering from her and I've done more. <laughs> but anyway, this is from the historical sampler company. They might have their own website. I don't know if it was Etsy. I think I think you have to go to their website to get it. But, and they have other ones. They have really pretty patterns. And it is, um, it's a PDF. And they're actually out of England. Hmm. And it is www.historicalsamplercompany.co.uk. And these don't look quite as, I could be wrong. I'm not going to say there's not much stitching because I say that and then there always is. Um, but anyway, if anybody else wants to join along, that would be lovely fun. And yeah, what about your plans? Well, for this week, I will keep working on my magazine monthly goals and really um, focusing on probably finishing those two. That's most of what I have left. The only other goals that I haven't done are my uh, Snow Queen. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna try to work two hours on my Mirabilia Snow Queen. That will be R for reindeer. And mm -hmm. an hour just wasn't enough to even like think about pulling her <laughs> out. It just feels like kind of a hassle to pull her out. Yeah. I don't know. I think I need a better project bag for her too. I think that, you know, like I'm starting to think when something becomes hard to work on, what is it? And I think yeah. for her, it's that I have her in a project bag, but it's not really a good one. And you love her, so it's not it because you don't nice love it. It is a big one, but it's, not, it's still not quite big enough. So I think I need to figure out, maybe I just need to put all the flosses in a separate bag that's attached. I don't know. I do love her and I want to work on her. Maybe she just needs to be in a tote bag, like an actual just tote yeah, bag with a handle. I have a couple knitting bags or a few, like I have some bigger things that I just haven't used because I usually yeah. put a bigger knitting project in there, but it might be mm -hmm. time to use that for a cross stitch. 
yeah I'll keep working on my stocking see if I can get I don't know if I could get 10 to 12 more little treats done then I'd be mm -hmm. finishing and yeah I've started thinking a little tiny bit about the coming year I still do not think I'm going to do WIPCO I just it just feels like not pleasant to me to think about but I am going to do Bringo mm -hmm. I am going to start my Hade and because I will theoretically have finished up these last two projects I mm -hmm. want to get organized to start Hawk, spring at Hawk Run Hollow and I'll probably pick some specific goals on both that and my shores of Hawk Run Hollow mm -hmm. and really work through those this coming year because those are my big and then I have the uh, near a billion so might be the coming year of my big ass projects. <laughs> the BAPs, your the BAPs. BAPs. My BAPs. I've got some BAPs that are going to be. A few. And so then I'll probably pick out some smaller ones. I have a few really cute patterns tucked away. That and I you know other small cute ones are going to come along too. That's the thing. So I'll probably try to, I still have several projects, but most of what I have now are kind of big ones. I think I've finished a lot of the smaller ones that I had. Yeah. Yeah. I've, so I have some mid size and some giant ones. And it's nice to have a mixture. So that's kind of my plans is just to keep working on my magazine goal this my monthly goal this week to wrap some presents and to knit a little bit on Millie's sweater. I have a baby outfit I need to start working on for a friend who had a baby that I didn't get done yet. And yeah, I had something funny I was gonna read that's not stitching related. So maybe I'll well, maybe we should do the giveaway and then I'll read it. Yeah, I was just gonna get this ready here. Let's do the giveaway. So we had a giveaway last week. And the word yeah. was mittens. Mittens. Yes. I'm just getting it out of the package so there's no glare. So we were giving away this Luhu Stitches Winter Fling, which I love. Super cute. And Super I would have totally entered this giveaway if I was watching us. And the winner of Winter Fling is Candy at the same yeah, Candy. Yay. Has Candy won from us before? Well, not lately, not for a long time. I don't time. know if I have her address. So, Candy, <laughs> we probably do, but send it in case. Yeah. I'll search and see in our email if we've got it. But yeah, I don't think it's in my email because I was going through it the other day looking for an address. I don't remember seeing Candy in mine. So, I think I probably have it. You maybe just deleted it. Anyways, uh, we do have a new giveaway this week as well, right? Yes. And this is by Sister Tail Designs and it's called Happy Snowball Days. So cute. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get, there we go. I think and I don't it. have Candy's address. So maybe she okay. never has won anything. Well crazy. So Candy, send us your address. And then this week, yeah, we're giving away Happy Snowball Days. Who's the designer on this? Scissor Tail Designs. It's really cute. I don't think I've ever heard of them before that I can I don't either. But it's really cute. I was going with the winter theme still. Yeah, I love that tree with that variegated striped yarn. It's I'm, not, I oh, wonder it's, if that's the sky. So this only calls for Weeks Dye Works Sky. I would think I that what color that is. I can't tell. And then it calls for 310 and B5200. You need a few beads, glass beads, and DMC 800 to do the beads works. And I can't. Is that tree then, sky? It must be, but or black, maybe black and I don't know. You can look in the chart. Well, let me see. I can <laughs> Why don't I look at the pattern and tell you? There's a way to find this out. <laughs> maybe I'll need to Google it. <laughs> okay. It is sky. Wow, that's an interesting color. Yeah, I'll have to Google that and see what color that is. I would have pictured sky like a sky blue. So when you said it used sky, I assumed the snowballs were kind of a bluish color or something, but no. So all oh. the white is B52. Yeah, and then there's a little bit of brown or black, 310 and 800. I think 800 is. Um, I, we didn't think of a word. Snowball. I'm looking at my child who's washing her DMC because the cat had it in his mouth. Is washing her DMC? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so word is snowball. Snowball, one singular snowball, like in the title, happy snowball days. Yep. Yeah, other than that, I don't really have anything else. I'm just gonna, yeah, plug along. 
Um, yeah, I just can't really wrap my head around the fact that it's the end of the year. I know. I think that's just kind of hard for me to comprehend that I got to get my act together. So Liddy wrote a newspaper for fun. Oh, uh-huh. Schooler, and that's what homeschoolers do for fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll read a few little selections because I thought they were lovely. Sorry, I'm just kidding. The, my favorite, the thing that made me laugh the hardest was when she interviewed everybody, but I didn't, I didn't have time to fill it out, but she interviewed family members of favorite things. We'll just read this. Rosie, oh, our weekly interview of favorite things we have done this week, quoted word for word, except for dad. Here is the top two. One, Rosie, favorite thing, get fully vaccinated. Why? Because COVID won't be as bad. Least fave thing, probably having trouble sleeping. Why? Because I wasn't getting enough rest. Two, dad, favorite thing, one, taking a nap this afternoon. Two, getting our Christmas tree. Why? One, because I was tired and it was really restful. Two, because I always like spending time in the, least in the woods with you all. Least favorite thing. Inappropriate. Why? Inappropriate. <laughs> Kind of big into making like potty humor jokes right now. <laughs> I think he needs some sons or something. Do you want me to tell you what it was? Do you like to know what the inappropriate thing was? Is it too inappropriate to say on our floss tube? It's about poop. Oh. <laughs> I think it was something. It was like least that. favorite thing, pooping. Why? Because it was stinky. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious that Liddy just wrote inappropriate inappropriate and why is emmy on there on the front page here well, here's the story about emmy emmy gets away with sleeping on bed all night <laughs> <laughs> really she didn't get put in her crate Ooh. instead of being put in crate emmy sneaks onto liddy's bed saturday after getting vaccine number two liddy did not feel good she woke up in the night with chills and stayed up with mom watching a baking show with until the ibuprofen kicked in. It did after a bit, but if she had walked around a lot more than just going to bed, she would have got the chills again. Not right. When she went down to go to bed again, she felt exhausted. She accidentally kicked something that moved. <laughs> she sat up immediately and looked at her feet. By them was Emmy curled up and staring at Liddy woefully. <laughs> Liddy just had to let her sleep on the bed that night because she would have gotten the chills again and not been able to go to sleep if she had walked upstairs again. But she did do one safety caution. She covered Emmy with blankets so that Liddy would know if Emmy had gotten up in the morning. Emmy did not got, get off the bed, so all was well. Here's Emmy. <laughs> it's a very attractive photo of Emmy. She's such a weird little dog. She does not know how to, no, she can hold her pee all night, but if she is loose in the house, we find special little presents oh, all over the house. Make it a special guest appearance. <laughs> So, okay. Here's that's the, the young in real life. Oh, and Liddy is now washing laundry for fifty cents a load. Oh, Find Liddy's laundromat in the laundry room, and Liddy will wash your laundry. <laughs> really? Everyone in the house vaccinated. Celebrate! Everyone in the house is fully vaccinated. It is time to celebrate. When you read this, yell, "Hip hooray!" Hip hooray! <laughs> So that was, those were the highlights. I thought oh, I might worth sharing. I don't know if you noticed your dad wandering around now. Time to go. <laughs> well, he brought me a present. What is this? But it's that German wine that you heat up and it's a sweet, warm, wassily kind of wine. We've had it before. Were you there? Oh, I don't know. It's Probably. yummy. Le wine. Huh? Le wine. I don't winter, know. Winter I love Trom. It. Winter Trom. Uh, Chris Kindle's glue wine. Glue wine. Glue wine. Anyway, he had to go down to the um, liquor store. <laughs> Apparently. Anyway. I, I, what's the stuff you warm up? I don't. Bye.
Oh, wait, get the cat outside. I anyway, know. we had this a long time ago at a friend's house and I really liked it. I'm not a big wine drinker. I'm not a big drinker at all, but I do like, this was really good and it's meant to be warmed up. So, and it's only seasonal. They only get it in. I realized recently that I do not really like warm alcohol. Like oh. anything. Je Jesse will sometimes, you know, make like coffee and then bring it to me with a little bit of Irish cream in it. And I don't like it. Oh, this doesn't, I mean, what well, like some i could imagine that one maybe being good it's kind of a spice it's spice probably more like a wassail which is yeah like, it's more like probably, probably a wassail okay yeah it's not like you take a bo open a bottle of cabaret and warm it up it's it's yeah. oh we'll have to try it when you're here and you might really like it i might yeah it's not that one's probably fine but i just noticed i that really before. thought he wouldn't be able to find it i thought there'd be a supply chain issue because it, it doesn't they get a certain amount in at like wine and more and then when it's gone it's kind of gone so yeah. i thought you know with the way things are going these days it might not even have made it off the ship who knows yeah anyway well yeah everybody all the newsy bits around here <laughs> oh i didn't send a video last week of our little adventure down to bellevue for snowflake lane which is a parade with its snows because we never got to see the parade because um the restaurant we were in was so crowded of people there for the parade that our dinner took forever to get to us and so we didn't see it but it was lovely and stressful at the same time just because mm -hmm. we're getting old and driving into town, into the city in the dark where you don't know where you're going is not our favorite activity. So if we ever do that again, we're riding with our kids. Yeah. <laughs> Hands down, we're not doing it again. Um, but anyway, it was, it was beautiful. It was decorated downtown. But I will take a video of my little front yard that my husband finally finished decorating. It's the first year, and I don't know how many years he's had to do it alone. No boys were home to help him. So it was kind of a, a new phase for him but it's kind of twinkly and it's pretty and I'll, I'll take some little video so if people want to see life <laughs> I, we had a big day yesterday so jesse is he works um now at a vocational training organization mm -hmm. organization minute slash ministry um trying to build up vocational training and opportunities for jobs in our really depressed um, economically depressed area. So he started a while ago, a robotics, Lego robotics league team, and they've been working all fall on a competition um, or getting ready to compete in a competition to qualify to see if they would go to state, which was a long shot that they would, you know, place in the top three out of like almost 20 teams so hard. as a brand new team like some of these teams have teachers who have been doing this for years and years because some of them are through school districts and stuff so we're just kind of feeling it out but yesterday was the big competition and or the qualifiers and they, we brought there were four kids that actually made it there were supposed to be seven but um two kids three kids weren't able to make it so there were four of us plus or four of them plus a gal who graduated from a Lego league thing several years ago. And she's the, she works, she works as Jesse's assistant and oh, robotics. She yeah, done robotics. That before. Lego robotics. Yeah. So she has a background in Lego robotics. Oh, okay. And she's great with the kids. She's really lovely. So she came and then the girls that I drove down and carpooled with another mom and her little one. And so Liddy got to compete. She's on the team and they did great. And we were super proud. Oh, yeah. oh, maybe she left. And they um, ended up placing 11th out of 17, which I thought was much for their first time out. Man, that is that's yeah. really impressive. And they did a little better each round that they got to run their robot. It's kind of complicated to explain, but they basically make a robot out of Legos and they they code it to be able to do certain obstacles on this basically like this obstacle course and. Mm -hmm get points for however many obstacles you compete complete and nice yes you can show it Billy. is there a time is there yeah, a time? two and a half minutes on your each round and you have like so your robot's moving quickly just a minute so anyways it was really fun to watch them and they were they got a little better each time and were really proud of themselves so it was a long day we didn't get home then we took them out to dinner on the way home and we had to drive an hour and a half away to get to the competition so wow. I was a very proud Mimi. I was a very proud Mimi. So I'll put a picture of Jesse and Liddy together at the yeah. end. Yeah. I won't post the whole team because. Yeah. Privacy. But yeah. we were really proud of them. Millie finished. You show it. I finished my little. 
Oh, look at that. I love it. I love the little pine branches. Cute, Millie. Nice job. Oh, you're all almost fully finished next week since you've already got the frame. I know. So that was the big news. Now Jesse's finished school for the semester. Oh, okay. I turned into a pillow. Jesse finished that, and the big work thing is done. He's got still to work, but the big commitment's over with. So Christmas finally. I can focus on it. We can all focus on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, well, I wish you all a happy, well, fun stitching week. Yeah. Well, oh, well, like healthy. Be well. Be well. Get your vaccine. We did. See how I did that? What'd you say? Get your vaccine. Oh. <laughs> your booster. You know we love you even if you don't have your vaccine. We just we just want everybody to be well and we just want this to stop. <laughs> yeah. I want to stop wearing a mask in the store. I know a lot of people that watch us probably aren't having to wear masks anymore, but our state man. I always forget that. Like we mm -hmm. have we're under a mask mandate still. You have to show your vaccine card in my county to go to a restaurant. But Eastern Washington, not like that. I mean, in our main town, yes. But like when we were at this little competition the other day, like. But you're not having to show your vaccine card to go to a restaurant. Well, and we actually did have to show, we did have to be vaccinated to go to this event. Right, right. If you were a grown up, kids didn't, under 12, yeah. or have a negative COVID test. Do I have to show a vaccine card to go anywhere? No. Mm -mm, no. Not over here. And we just do for the for the restaurants in this county. Other counties don't. Maybe. Anyway, it just I would like it, and I don't I don't have a problem showing it. It's not like it's my badge of honor, but I got it. If it means I can have a somewhat normal life, I'll show it and yeah. call it good. But anyway, I just want everybody to be safe during the holidays because you know we're gathering and yeah yeah. Anyway. And again, if you're a friend, you want to be a featured friend, send us a picture and enter the giveaway. Like and subscribe to our video. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyway, we love you. Have a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>